Okay, here we are in Microsoft Access and we're going to be looking at queries and what they do and how we can use them. So what is a query? Now, you already know when you query something, you're asking a question, okay? You're asking a question. I just said that. When you query a database, you're asking the database for specific information. So that's what a query is. So in Microsoft Access, you can see here I've got a demonstration file here. Here is my consultants table. So this is a company and these are all the consultants that work for this company and this is all their information. Okay. We've got the, uh, an ID, the first name, last name, an ID number, gender, date of birth, starting date for the company, their address, details, phone and email, whether they work remotely or not, the sales area that they are responsible for, and how much money they brought in for Q1. Q1 is quarter one, the first quarter of the year, so January, February and March. All right. And then, of course, what sort of commission level they are at. So if we go and create a query now, if I say, okay, I would like to have a query of all of the details of the consultants. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm first going to go and click on Create. Then I'm going to go to Query Design. The, we can use Query Wizard as well, and I'll create the next one using Query Wizard, but this one's called Query Design. Query Design, okay, cool. And close the property sheet there. Right, so I've got two tables here. I'm going to use the consultants table. Just drag it out there. I can even double click on it. It doesn't actually matter. And you can see now in the table, here it is here, I've got all the fields from that table. So I would like to show the following information. I would like to show the last name. So I can click and drag the last name there. Then I'd like the first name. So here's another way you can do it. I can just double click adds it over there or I can even go here and I can click and then choose a field here so you can see there's just there's already three ways of doing it you pick the way that works for you stick with that okay so let's go with the starting date and let's go with the contact details so we'll go for a, uh, a phone and email there we go so let's have a look and see what have we actually done here we've created a query we've asked the database to return some information the information is as follows, the last name, the first name, the starting date, the phone and the email of all the consultants or all the records actually in this consultants table. Let's run the query and see that it works. So I can click on view or run, does the same thing. There we go. Let's have a look. Last name, first name, start date, phone and email. There they all are. I've got 50 records. Perfect. So there you can see I don't have to look at the entire table in the in the table consultants. I can actually just draw specific information from the table and that is what a query is. Now we're going to save this query so that we can always come back to it if we need to actually use it for a report or something like that. So you can hit the save icon or control S on your keyboard and instead of calling it query one, let's just call this consultant. Uh, ugh, that's, I got it. Learn how to spell consultant contact details. All right, that's what I'm going to call it. Consultant contact details. Click OK. Done. I can close the query now. There it is over there underneath queries. Let's do another query and do a few more things with that query. OK, so back to create. And remember, I said I would show you the, the query wizard. So let's use the query wizard this time. So we're not going to use query design. Let's use the query wizard. So click on query wizard. OK, cool. We're just going to create a simple query. That's all we're going to do. Just nice and simple. Click OK. Right. What do we want to have in this the query? Well, let's go again with last name and first name. Let's put their ID numbers and their date of birth and let's go with their sales area as well. I'm just choosing random stuff here guys. I'm not choosing anything specific here. Yeah? It's just we're just practicing getting used to making queries. Okay. So there you go. I've selected the fields. I click on next. What do I want to say? Uh, say what I want to see. Everything is fine. Great. Let's click on next. And you know what? Let's just call this a consultants query. There you go. Consultants query. Open the query to view information. Great. Finish. Perfect. And that query actually works quite well. Let's switch to the design view 
of this query and see what are some of the things we can perhaps work with. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to switch to design view. And if you have a look at the, the design view, let's say I wanted to run this query, but I would like to have it sorted according to surname. It's actually pretty easy. So here is the field that contains last name. There it is there. So this column is where I'm working. And I've got the last name from the table consultants. And what am I going to sort it by? I'm going to click over here and I'm going to sort it ascending. Last name ascending. Let's see what that does. Run the query. And as you can see, it has been sorted ascending according to the last name. Of course, I mean, you could add sorting on other fields as well, but it will start at the left and then follow through on the right. And that is how we do sorting in a basic query. So let's just save this query as well. Close that over there. Right. Let's have a look at what else we can do with queries. I'm going to open up the table so that you can see uh, just what all the fields that we have. And I'm going to do a query that will return a the males, the male consultants. So let's say I want to do create a report with just all the contact details of the male consultants. This is how we would do this. I'm going to close that table over there, go to create. I'm going to go back to query design because I, I like using that. There's my consultants table. Double click over there. Okay, so let's go with uh, last name, first name, and let's do uh, phone number as well email address, whoops, which I did twice, which I don't need to do, just get rid of that, and gender, I'm going to need gender as well. Now, if I ran this query as is, and I'll do it, there it is, you can see that it shows me all the information, last name, first name, phone, email, and gender, but obviously it's showing me all, okay, it's showing me male and female, so I don't want to show male and female, I just want to show the male uh, consultants. So I'm going to go to the gender column here, the gender field, and here you can see I've got a row. It says criteria. So I can actually now take this query one step further and give it some criteria and say, you know what? Only show me where it says male in the gender field. And you'll notice I used quotes, okay? Quotes, okay? Double quotes, like not apostrophe, uh, quotations. Quotation marks, you know what I'm talking about. Watch this now. I'm not going to take that away. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Click on run and have a look now. Now you can see I actually have 33 records and every single one of them is a male from the table. The females have not been included in this query. Let's do it the other way around. Okay, so let's change that. So change it to female instead. There it is over there and run it now. There you go, 17 records have been returned and they're all female. So there you go. Let's save this one as, well, it's called female now. So let's call it female um, consultants. I always do that O capital. Hey, is that weird? Oh my word, what am I doing? Okay, there we go. So female consultants and save. And there you go. I've got my third query done already. Let's have a look at another one. Right, opening up my table, and I want to show you in the areas, the sales area, we've got Johannesburg and we have Pretoria. There we go, Johannesburg and Pretoria. Now, let's say I wanted to create a query that will show me all the consultants who work who or whose areas are Johannesburg and Pretoria. So I'm going to go to Query Design, add my table again, last name, first name, and uh, let's see here, let's just do just for having something, a contact number, for example, and the sales area, put the sales area in there. I'm going to sort this according to the surname, ascending. And now, this is the important thing. I only want to see Johannesburg and Pretoria. So have a look at what we can do. There are two ways of doing this. So in my criteria row, there it is there criteria row, I'm going to go over there, and I'm going to type in the word Johannesburg, I think I spelt it wrong again, there we go, <laughs> oh, Johannesburg, Johannesburg, oh, I'm so sorry, there we go, Johannesburg, okay, that's my first one, and let's see if it's working, let's see, so run, great, it's all Johannesburg, but I also want Pretoria, so it's going to be underneath. So do you see here, underneath the criteria, it says OR. So the second row is your OR row. So watch what happens now. I'm going to write the word Pretoria, 
correct first time, Johannesburg or Pretoria. Johannesburg in one row, Pretoria in the other row. So when it's in two separate rows like that, it's or. Let's have a look and see what happens now. I'm going to leave that selected so you can see that it is correct. Run. That is so cool. Pretoria, Johannesburg, Pretoria, Johannesburg. Only Pretoria and Johannesburg have been selected here. I'm going to show you another way that you can actually do this query. And I want to show you this. So I'm going to take the word Pretoria away from there. There's the word Johannesburg in my criteria row. I'm going to type or. Just typing in uppercase so it like looks big. You can see it. All right. And there is the word Pretoria. So now look what I've done. Johannesburg in quotations or not in quotes. Pretoria in quotations. Remember anything in text goes in quotes. Johannesburg or Pretoria. So that will show me everyone who is either in Johannesburg or in Pretoria. Will it work? Let's find out. Yes, it does. One question a lot of my students ask me is like, why didn't we just say Johannesburg and Pretoria? Because I mean, we're looking for Johannesburg and Pretoria. Let me show you why not. Johannesburg and, so we can use and as an operator, just like or, okay. Johannesburg and Pretoria. Let's see what it does. I'm going to run this and there's no one. Why is that? Because you can't be in Johannesburg and Pretoria at the same time. It doesn't happen. All right, so you can't be both. So that's why it's or. It's either Johannesburg or Pretoria. So everybody from Johannesburg, and if there's no one, everybody from Pretoria. Okay, that's why we don't use and. Even though we say Joburg and Pretoria, we, we go with Joburg, and we type or Pretoria. There we go. I'm going to show you another query where we use like an AND feature. Like what does AND mean? That's where we have something that has two conditions or two criteria. So here's an example. I want to use a query that will show me all of the remote workers who work in Durban. All the remote workers who work in Durban. Now, if we look at our table, all right, go back to the table. You can see that the areas are here. Okay, there's Durban. That's how we spell it over there. And remote worker is a yes or no field. It's like true or false. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that here we're going to, in sales area, you know what? I'm going to just switch these two around. You see how I just drag and drop there, right? Eh? Let's go to sales area. I'm going to say the criteria is a Durban. There it is there. So that is in my criteria row. And I'm going to say that the remote option must be true. You'll notice I don't use quotes for this because it's not text. I'm not looking for text. I'm looking for a condition on or off. Yes or no. True or false. Da, 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 I don't know. My hands just do that when I do that. Okay. Sorry. But how do I know it's and? They're in the same row. Look at the criteria row. When I put things in the same row, it's and. When I put things in one row and the other row, it's or. Okay, so let's see what that does. Let's run it. It's super cool. There you go. All my Durban consultants who are working remotely are now returned in this query. And that is what it looks like. Here's another example, the last one I want to show you. And that is what if we don't want to include something in our query? So here's an example where we got first name, last name, ID number, email, and the sales area. So I want to return uh, all of this information and all the sales areas except Nelspreit, okay? Because nothing ever happens in Nelspreit. Not that I know of. So let's go not Nelspreit. So watch this. Super easy. I'm going to just write the word not in my criteria row, not Nelspreit. I'm in my sales area, sales area field, okay? Not Nelspreit. And you know what? There goes my <laughs> typing again. Not Nelspreit. Let's test this and see what happens. Run the query. Have a look. In fact, you know what? I'm going to just go back to design. I'm going to, I'm going to sort this. And let's hit search this. Sorted ascending. Run the query. And let's see. We've got, this is alphabetical now. And you can see for yourself. Not Nelspreit. No Nelspreit. Sorry, guys. Sorry if you live in Nelspreit. I apologize. Uh, the other thing is you can also just use not equal to. All right. So not greater than, not less than. The, I don't know. Whatever that is. Whatever that is. Okay. Those two chevron bracket, ang angled brackets, angular brackets. I don't know what you call them. But there you go. Not Nelspreit or is not Nelspreit. So let's go have a look. 
check it out and it works perfectly. 